Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Izan. So it has been a while, a very long while since I did the comparison, you know, between Vectinator and other vector apps. So I think it is time that I do something like that in this video for 2021. So let's get into it. When it comes to grids, Vectinator provides two types, perpendicular and isometric. Both of these grids can be customized to suit your needs. You can change the spacing as well as the angle. These features are also available in Affinity Designer. We have plenty of grids to choose from. When it comes to isometric grid, you can also customize as you wish. When we look at Adobe Illustrator, there is only the perpendicular grid. There is no option for isometric grid at all. All three of these vector apps in this video has options to turn on specific types of snapping or guides. But when it comes to touch gesture, I have a few things to say. For Vectinator, when I turn off the smart guides, I can move the object freely as I wish. And when I want to restrict its movement and follow a guide, I simply place one finger anywhere on the screen. This feature I find very convenient and it's also available in Affinity Designer. But in Adobe Illustrator, they do things differently. They have this fixed spot for you to place your finger. I don't find this convenient at all. I find myself looking down at the canvas to place my finger exactly on that spot in order for this gesture to work. It somehow breaks my momentum when I'm working. You can get used to this over time, but I prefer the freedom to place my finger anywhere on screen to get the job done. All three apps are able to do this, but why am I covering this in this video? Because Vectinator used to only have this option for rectangles that are created using the rectangle tool. You can now round any corner node individually. This one is what I'm very happy about. This speeds up work tremendously. Vectinator now has this feature called Quick Actions. While working on an object or more, when you select them, immediately there will be buttons appearing right under the object. You can easily choose the common task that you might want to do on those objects. Adobe Illustrator has a similar thing, but there's one thing it's missing when compared to Vectinator, the mask option. Now when we go to Affinity Designer, they have this contextual options called the Contextual Toolbar. And it's located right at the bottom of the screen. This is okay if you're used to it. But now that I've experienced Vectinator's quick action feature, this feels very tiresome. I really love effects. It's how I'm able to create this artwork which recreates a shallow depth of field and this one, a neon effect, smoke effect and more. I did all these just by using one effect that is in Vectinator and it's called Blur. Now this is simplicity at its best. Now let's look at Affinity Designer. You have tons of effects at your disposal. The sky is the limit when you want to create complex artwork that uses lots of different types of effects. Sometimes I find myself just using the glow effect. I rarely use other effects that are in there. Vectinator is the first vector app that I know of that uses, you know, that gives you the option to have auto trace. You can't find this on any other vector apps anywhere. Vectinator has greatly improved on their in-tool help. You simply tap and hold on any button and a tool tip with some short notes explaining what it does will appear. 
You have no idea how helpful this is for beginners just starting to learn Vectornator. This type of feature doesn't exist in Adobe Illustrator. And in Affinity Designer, this small teeny tiny button right at the bottom corner that when you tap on it, the name of all the tools will appear at once to let you have a clue what it does. And that's it. I really appreciate having this feature in Vectornator as well as in Adobe Illustrator because sometimes you just want to quickly erase parts of an object. All three apps have plenty of export options to choose from and the common JPEGs and PNGs are all there but Vectornator has something that the other two doesn't. Vectornator can export to Adobe CC and to Adobe Illustrator easily. It can also output a time-lapse video. The AR feature is useful when you want to check out how your artwork will look like on a wall. All right, to sum up, I'm really, really liking Vectornator more and more with each and every update they, they come up with. The people behind Vectornator really strives to keep on improving the app to make the designer's life easier. But at the same time, they don't compromise on the fundamentals of keeping the app simple because you have to keep the app simple, approachable, and yet very powerful. So there is this saying, the simplest solution is usually the best. And this is why I highly recommend Factinator. So that's the end of this video. And if you do like this video, do give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.